What's up with you? For today's video, we're the full Generation 9 New Types Pokemon team. Now, in Generation 9 Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there are seven new type combination Pokemon. One of them is Scovelin right here, which is a grass and fire type. There are six others. Can you guess them right now? Pause the video, drop a comment, see which ones you can guess right now, and keep watching and see if you were right. I've got four battles today with the new types for Generation 9 team, and I really hope you enjoy. First battle here we have, I'm not really sure of the trainer's name, but I know they've got a little Palafin lead here. Now, if you enjoyed the videos, people, and you want to help the channel out, make sure you drop a like there, and give me some feedback in the comment section. Tell me which sort of new Generation 9 typing do you like the most. We've got a flip turn here from the little Palafin lead on my Scovelin. Now, Scovelin actually has good potential for running a mixed attacking set. Let me show you what one's going to be. So, this is a Sunny Day Chlorophyll set. The item is Heat Rock, and I've got the move set Growth, which in Under the Sun is going to boost the attack and special attack by two stages. I've got Solar Beam, and I've got Fire Fang. So it's a nice mix attack here. Chlorophyll making up for me having no investment in speed. It's actually quite an interesting Pokemon. Now, I've got the EV spread max attack and max special attack. So nothing in speed, purely relying on that sun to uh, get me going there. So unfortunately, I'm going to get uh, my stats stolen by opportunities here. But uh, good for me, they're going to use reflect, not attacking. So that was really, really good. So now I can start trying to get a sweep uh, going right here. So in the sun, uh, Solar Beam is going to be hitting very, very hard. So this is a uh, very first grass and fire type Pokemon too. So really, really cool combination of our uh, Pokemon types. So that's the first Pokemon. And now we've got the next Pokemon here of the early riser. What's this? I'm, I'm quite an early riser in the morning, like I wake up very early. Uh, we got a, uh, a boost sticker on the Quark Drive here, giving it a boost in speed. So Iron Jugglers is going to outpace me only because I don't have any speed EVs and it's going to take out my Scoville. If I didn't have that, I think I might have had a good chance of a sweep there. Next Pokemon is going to be Pormont. So Pormont is our next new type combination. It is a electric and fighting type, which is pretty cool. So I've got on this set Revival Blessing, Double Shock, Ice Punch, and Close Combat. Now, Double Shock is quite an interesting attack here because it actually is typeless, which is pretty cool. So what you have to do here, right, is you can have to go for that Terra type into Electric, right? And then you'll be able to use the Double Shock. If you don't Terra Electric, you won't be able to use it. So in this case, I'm going to have a Terra Ice set here. In the next battles, I've got a Terra Electric one. So I'm sort of like experimenting what I could do. So when comes uh, Clodside, this thing is so tanky. I went for Ice Punch. I know it was super effective, but it was super, super weak. Now, I've got the Iron Fist as the ability. I've got Max Attack and Max Speed Jolly Nature and Punching Glove as the item. So I'm going to go for the Revival Blessing there on Scovelin. Now, when you use... Sorry, I've got Leopard Berry, not Punching Glove. I, I, I swapped the move set up. So when you go for Revival Blessing, it brings back a fainted Pokemon to 50% health. So it's a very, very powerful move, but you only have one PP. So with uh, Leopard Berry, that actually gives you two chances of using that move, which is kind of nice there. So there's no way in this wide world I'm ever going to be able to get around Clodsidal. It's just simply too bulky. So I'm going to have to swap it out and use another option here. So what I'm going to be doing is going into Grafifi, which is our third Pokemon. Now, Grafifi is a poison and normal type, which is pretty cool. Now, this is more of like a uh, support style set. It gets a lot of cool moves here, and you can make use of its pranks and ability. So we got a Terra Poison Clodsire here. This thing is going to be like super annoying to get around. So I've got the moves Super Fang, Toxic, Switcheroo, and Parting Shot. And I've got the item Black Sludge, and ability is going to be Prankster. Now, my EV spread is uh, Max Defense, uh, Impish Nature, and Max Health. So I'm making it very defensive. And yeah, I'm going to go for Sufang here and try and just get it in a lower amount of range and swap another Pokemon in, you know, to try and faint this. 
So I know that it's going to go for Earthquake here. That's going to be a two-hit KO. Uh, the Sunlight has uh, now gone as well. So I thought, well, look, I could go for another Super Fang here. And then you know, even if I sacrifice Fi off here, I could always swap another Pokemon to get rid of this. So go for another Super Fang here. Now, unfortunately, the Clyde Sight is not going to attack me. They're going to start stalling Recover. I'm like, oh, no. Okay, I have to. I've got to get around this Pokemon. It's super toxic. Like, look at that. Look at that terror on top of 10. So here comes a, another Black Sun's Recovery for them. Of course, for both of us, I couldn't really use Switcheroo there. Would have been nice to give it a, a, an item. Uh, the Reflect is going to be going to go for another Sufang here. I guess they figured that I'm going to keep going for Sufang like over and over again until they fate me. So here comes a Terra Poison Jab. That's going to do nothing. I think they actually predicted the swap there. I was actually fairly close to uh, swapping into another Pokemon. I'm glad that I didn't, though. So now I'm right. Okay, let's just keep going for Parting Shot now. I'm not going to go for Sufang. If they do go for Recover again, so be it. They're not going to be hitting very hard. So I've dropped it to Attack and Special Attack, and uh, Grafifi is going to be swapping out. And we're going to go into Reverb Room. So this is another new typing. This is a Steel and Poison typing. So it's going to go for the Earthquake there, which I knew there was a good chance of, but I knew I'd be able to live this. So the reason why I went is because I've got a Steel Beam special set. So I'm just going to fire that Steel Beam off, and that's going to faint me, you know. And it's going to be a bit of a surprise. So to go for Steel Beam, and Clodside just lives. It was so, so close. Uh, special Reva Room is um, a, a smoking pile. It's absolutely horrendous, and that's why I want to use it. We had Max Health, Max Special Attack, Overheat, Steel Beam, Sludge Bob, Terra Blast, Flying, and Choice Packs and Filter as the ability. So now the coast is clear there for my little Capsicum, and I'm going to go for a little bit of a Fire Fang there, and that is the end of the Stalling Clod size. So now you've seen four of the new Typing Pokemon. I wonder what the other three could be. Next Pokemon is going to be the Iron Jugglers again, and um, actually, I'm going to probably do a Iron Jugglers moveset guide tonight as well, so if you've been enjoying the moveset guides, that one will be up a little later. I'm trying to work through all the Paradox Pokemon. So that's the end of my uh, my my, uh, my little Capsicum, sadly. And it's going to go for Earth's Power now. And that's going to finish the Fire Fights. I'm like, dang. Okay, I was just trying to see what item it had. And, uh, well, sorry, what moves it had. I know what item it had already had that boost of energy. So going to Pormont now. It's going to go for Taunt. I'm guessing they think that I'm going to go for a Revival Blessing. And I'll be honest, it actually did cross my mind. But at the last moment, I changed my mind and went for the Terra Ice Punch. And it was a good thing I had that too, because that was enough to take out the Iron Jugglers there with the crit. Did that matter? I, I want to say it didn't with Max Stack and uh, the Terra Ice. Um, I really don't think that actually matters. So we've taken out half the team now. So things are you know, pretty good at the moment. Very, very competitive team. Next Pokemon is going to be Iron Thorn. So I haven't revealed my uh, close combat yet. So I'm like, okay, we can go for close combat or should I go for Revival Blessing? I'm like, nah, let's get some good damage on this thing. So I got some quality damage there on the Iron Bubs. Almost taken out. Just lived on a slither of health. And now it's going to be going for a Stone Mist there. Stone Mist is not going to miss and Pormon is done. But that was a solid performance there. Pormon it's a very good Pokemon, I have to say that. Um, good physical attacker, you know, good access to revival. Uh, blessing too, and so uh, pretty cool moves. Next Pokemon is going to be Low Kick. So Low Kick is another new type combination here. It was a Bug and a Dark type. So I've got Sucker Punch, Axe Kick, First Impression, and Leech Life. So this is a physical sweeper. I've got the item on it as a Salt Vest because I thought that it would be a little bit of a surprise there for any uh, you know special attackers. It would actually allow it to have a little bit more bulk and will work well with Leech Life. I've got the ability Tinted Lens, which is going to power up those not very effective moves, which is great for bug types, to be honest, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, obviously, a lot of uh, Pokemon that can swap into that. So here comes the Titan, and uh, so Titan is going to be able to get hit by Axe Kick here. Axe Kick is going to land, does quality damage, and on top of that, I uh, have a Confusion. So Axe Kick is a 120 base power. It's got 90% accuracy and has a 30% chance of confusion. However, if you miss this move, you actually lose 50% health because you take crash damage. So it's kind of an interesting move there. I don't know why they gave it to low kicks for because it's not even a fighting type. So that really never made sense to me there. I always thought when I seen low kicks for the first time, like, oh, it's a bug and fighting type Pokemon. But, you know, there you go. So I'm going to go for the Sucker Bunch there. They're going to get the Snowscape up. They're going to try and slush rush endgame sweep me here. But Satyton is going to hit itself in confusion. So I was very, very lucky there. 
Obviously, they've only got attacking moves. They could have played around with Snow Skate there, but um, I didn't think, uh, you know, pretty much that first confusion, them hitting themselves, uh, spell do for their uh, little so Titan Sweep. Uh, last Pokemon is the Palafin. It's going to be zero to hero, and they're going to go for Ice Punch here. Ice Punch does a lot of damage. Low Kicks is going to be our lift that. I just went for Leech Life here. I really didn't expect to uh, be living this, uh, you know, this matchup here. I knew that I'd get outsped. So Low Kicks does some good damage there. I'm going to follow up with a Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch does good damage there. I've actually got Terra Dark on this Pokemon. Uh, Palafin now has his own draining move, which is Drain Punch. Drain Punch is very, very good on Palafin. I actually thought they also may go for the bulk up too. That's why I went for Leech Life at the same time there. So go for another Sucker Punch there. Palafin just lives uh, due to its really good bulk, and it's going to finish me uh, off with the Drain Punch there. But yeah, Low Kicks is a pretty interesting Pokemon. I don't know. It always reminds me of Buck and Fighting. Maybe, you know what I should do? I'm thinking about doing a team of Pokemon that have, like, confusing types of Gen 9. Like, you know, like, Low Kicks. I feel like that should be Buck and Fighting, right? If anyone can else can think of some other Pokemon that fall into that category, it can be any one of the Gen 9 Pokemon. Let me know in the comment section of the video. I'd love to do that. So I'm going to bring in the last Pokemon, of course, which is Iron Valley, and that is the Charge Beam, and that is a new Type 2 being Fairy and Fighting. So... Finish off the Palafin there real easy. And uh, let's get on to battle number two. Now, we have another battle here. Not really sure of my opponent's name here. And we got another Palafin lead. This uh, is a very common lead here. People like to swap in. Now, this battle, I'm going to feature the very last, uh, the seventh uh, new typing of Generation uh, 6. And uh, let me just bring that up now. So we've got my Scovelin lead. And Palafin swapped out here and went into Gengar. So Gengar... I mean, I should be able to do some decent damage to this, right? Gengar's going to go for a Destiny Bond. It outspeeds me in the chlorophyll. I'm like, this is Choice Scarf Destiny Bond Gengar. <laughs> what the hell? And anyway, a Scovelins, it is. It has to be. And uh, that's the end of my Scovelin there. It's like, damn, Choice Scarf Destiny Bond. I think they'll be watching a Pip Night video or two. Anyway, so we're going to go into the final new type of Pokemon, which is Great Tusk. So... Great Tusk is actually a, um, a ground and fighting type, which is new. So this is a complete troll set. Watch this one go. So we got my favorite ability here, which is going to boost up my attack, which works nicely with Scoville and two. So I've got a Defense Curl Rollout set. So I've got Defense Curl, Rollout, Body Press, and Mud Slap. Item is going to be Quick Law. EV Spread is Max Attack, Adam and Nature, and Max Speed. Now, even with the Max Speed... I wouldn't say it's super, super fast. So that was just there to outspeed any other, like, real quick Pokemon. So Palafin's going to go for a liquidation. It's doing nothing. I've got their defense boost up and the sun is up too. Um, interesting enough, the camera, when you get a quick activation, it actually faces the Pokemon frontwards instead of going back at the behind camera view, which is kind of interesting there. I'm not really surprised. Though. So that's the end of Palafin and Gengar. So we're going to get this rollout sweep, people. It's going to it's gonna happen. So out comes, uh, oh, out comes Chian Pao. Chian Pao has missed with Icicle Crash. That was a big miss there. And uh, it's going to have Blunder Policy as the item too. Uh, the only problem about that is I have got a rollout incoming, and that is going to be hitting really, really hard too, taking Chian Pao in one big pow shot. So that's half the team gone. I've got three to go. I'm going to try and get this. I'm going to try and like mop the rest of this team up here. So out comes the Dragapult. Dragon Darts is going to do nothing. I'm just way too tanky after that defense skill. And now I'm going to go for another rollout here. Now rollout locks you in for five turns unless, of course, you miss or the opponent you know, somehow dodges it or something like that. Or you get paralyzed. There's a lot of little things that can stop it. So anyway, my uh, ability is going to run out there. Uh, we got the next Pokemon as Garchomp. This is my final rollout here. And Garchomp goes down in one shot. So there's only one more Pokemon remaining. I've taken four Pokemon out so far. Last Pokemon is going to be uh, King Gambit. And I'm just going to sit on the toilet. And that, my friends, is almost a rollout sweep there with a sprinkle of uh, body press. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope my my uh, Japanese opponent enjoyed that one too. I bet they loved that so much. Let's get on to battle number four. Uh, this is a battle against Steven. So did anyone get all the types right? The new typings of the uh, Pokemon? I, I hope you did there with it without looking it up. So uh, yeah, I, it also makes me curious too. How many more Pokemon types do we have that aren't existing yet? Like does anyone have like 
think off the top of their head. I'm, I know we've got like Zoroark, but that also already exists. So there mustn't be too many more types that actually exist out there that we don't have. So we got a Palafin lead again for like the third time. Like, what's going on here? It's like Palafin and Community Day. So uh, we got the Star Raptor sliding in here. I really can't do a lot to that with uh, Fire Fang. It's going to do nothing. And now I'm going to go into River Room, right? Now you wouldn't read about it. Watch this. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I was thinking about going for our OV. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go for uh, the Steel Beam, right? So in comes Cynthia the Gourmet. I think they did that on purpose. And I'm going to go for the Steel Beam here, doing quality damage to Garchomp, almost taking out. Then after this, they popped a dig. And you know what that means? If you miss Steel Beam, you take recoil damage. That was cruel. Man, that made me really, really salty. I was actually, I was laughing and, and, and laughing and raging at the same time. It was very, very funny. So the next Pokemon is going to be Scovelin. Now, Garchomp has taken a little bit of a, uh, a rest underground. I'm going to go for the growth there and boost up my attack and special attack by two stages. So now Garchomp is going to go for a dig here. Dig almost takes me out. It's very, very, uh, very, very close. I can outspeed the Garchomp thanks to the Chlorophyll ability. And you know, this is going to hit very hard. With a plus two and special attack, there's no way that Garchomp will live this up. Even at full health, it was going to be fainting there. Unless it had something crazy like uh, Assault Vest. So that's Garchomp down, which is good. Next Pokemon is going to be uh, the Palafin. Now it's in its uh, hero hero mode here. Now the Palafin is going to be going for a Terry. As so I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I bet you they're going to go for a Terra uh, Jet Punch here because they know they're going to get outsped and Solar Beam is absolutely going to dominate them. So they're going to go for the Terra Water uh, Jet Punch here. Now, since I've only got a little bit of health left here, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to live this. You know, Palafin is a very, very powerful Pokemon. So that's the end of uh, Scovelin there, but a, a quality performance there. Scovelin's, I actually quite like Scovelin. I think it's a very, very good Pokemon. And it can do like a lot of cool things too. Now, next Pokemon's going to be my poor mod here. This time, I've got the Terra Electric on this set, and I'm going to be able to use Double Shock. Now, if you do use Double Shock and you're not a pure electric type, it just it just fails. It won't work right. But this move is quite similar to Burn Up, right? But I've got one sort of little question here. I'm not sure if anyone's actually noticed this before. Like, watch this. So I went for the Double Shock here. Now, that's going to be Terra Double Shock, you know, Palafin. Uh, the entire uh, family of dolphins in, like, the entire world are going to get wrecked after that. But it says after it uses its move, it sort of makes me think of Burn Up here. It says it's uh, used up all of electricity. Now, that makes me think back to Burn Up, right? When you use Burn Up once, you, it says you've, you've burned yourself out, so you can't use Burn Up again. You can keep using Double Shock in consecutively. So is that just flavor text or, like, what is it? I'm going to obviously have a look after this video, too. I'm going to do some, like, more research, but it might just be flavor text. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. So it says it's used up all the electricity. That's, it's interesting because... Or is that, like, a, I don't know, mistranslation or something like that? I'm not really sure. It's sort of something to think about there, you know, because uh, when you compare it to Burn Up, because it's very, very similar. So anyway, we're going to swap out the poor mod there. In comes uh, the Mouse Guard. It's going to go for a trick here. And that's going to swap our items around. So I actually gave the Meowth Scarter a Assault Vest and I've got a Choice Scarf. So I'm thinking that's actually not all that bad because Low Kicks isn't, I wouldn't call it amazingly fast. So I'm like, okay, I could go for Axe Kick here. That should be a good option. Now the Meowth Scarter is going to be swapping out here. Obviously worried about you know, a bug type move, anything like that. So they went into their Quack Quavel. So excellent damage on Quack Quavel. I even got a confusion. I'm like, wow, that was really, really lucky. So this is where things started to go very, very wrong. So I went for Axe Kick, and of course it missed. Of course it missed against a Pokemon that has Moxie. So you watch this. I watch this, right? So Quack Quavel is dancing there on the spot. It gets around into confusion, and then it goes for Aqua Step. I'm like, oh, no. That, this can't have happened to me. So the uh, Quack Quavel is going to get a speed boost there, and it's going to go Moxie something. And I don't even know how I'm going to like be able to beat this thing, you know? So I've got Grafifi here. I've got Prankster and Toxic. That's about it. And I, I guess I could switch a Rue in Black Sludge at the same time. But I don't know whether I'm going to live this attack. I am max health, max defense, though. So I might live, like, super duper badly. So uh, the Quack Quavel is still confused, I guess, is, which is good. And the Quack Quavel actually hits itself in confusion. I'm like, yo, that was really, really big there. That was a huge turn. So that means the next turn, the Quack Quavel is going to faint regardless. So this thing I did here, I just rubbed a little bit of salt in. I went for the switcher. I was like, I'm going to give them a Black Sludge there. Let's get that Black Sludge KO. Let's get it happening there. So, uh, you know, Quack Quavel got a blob of Black Sludge for Christmas. You know, it's, it's a late Christmas gift, but it was a thoughtful one. So Quack Quavel is going to, guess what? It hits itself in confusion again for the second time. 
Oh, that's really bad luck there. I say to my opponent, they had to be salty after that. I guess it was a little bit of karma that they got through at the first one, but then the second one, no, nah, that was just bad luck to my opponent there. Next Pokemon is Cool Story, bro. And um, I don't know what they call that for, but I'm going to go for the Super Fang, and Super Fang does good damage there. It does uh, half damage. I know that really surprises you. So I'm going to take some Life Orb damage from Super Fang on your Pinot Shadow, and uh, it's going to go for a co uh, Kowtow Cleave twice and slice up the little Grafifi there. But Grafifi couldn't do anything anything anyway, so it was fine being a dark and poison type. All my moves sort of failed there, except for Super Fang. Last Pokemon, uh, se sorry, second last Pokemon is going to be my poor mine. I'm going to go for that close combat. I sort of had that one hidden away for most of the battle, saving up for um, King Gambit, because it's very, very bulky, you know, without a, a fighting time move. So last Pokemon is the Mouse Guard. I'm like, oh, I want to try something here. This might go for Sucker Punch. I could be wrong, but I could be right too. So I went for the uh, Revival Blessing here in hopes that it went for the Sucker Punch. And I'm going to eat my Leprechaun. So Revival Blessing is going to be bringing back Low Kicks, right? So Low Kicks is ready to rumble again. Instead of using Sucker Punch, it's going to go for a Flower Trick. That's a crit. And I've got the drops from the Close Combat. So Poor Mon is going to be no more though. So a little bit of O prediction on my part there. But it wasn't all that bad because I brought back Low Kicks. And Low Kicks has got first impression and has got a choice scarf there. Making doubly sure I went first. And that is the end of, <laughs> of the fourth battle. Right, I hope you enjoyed that, people. And let's get on to the... Uh, wait, no, that was the third battle. I can't even count the four. Right, here we go. One, two, three, four. You learned something today, people. Mathematics with Hip Knight. Like, you, like man, you should, um, you should tune to these videos every day, people. You always learn something new, you know? Whether it's uh, learning how to pronounce words, mathematics, uh, Pokemon information, or just simply having a laugh. All right, next Pokemon battle here. We got a Gyarados Lee. So I wanted to try and get my rollout set working, but it wasn't really favorable, uh, you know, conditions, you know? Especially with the ginormous Gyarados spamming waterfall. So in comes the Grafifi there. It's a solid three hit KO after the uh, Black Sludge there. So I'm thinking, well, I may as well go for a Toxic Prankster here, and then I might be able to get Switch and Roof. Or I could even go Parting Shot too. That would be good against the Gyarados, you know, if it tried to set up any Dragon Dancers, which, you know, well, could. So Gyarados is going to go for the Earthquake there. That is going to be hitting very hard for super effective damage, and that's the end of a Fire Fire. So, okay, fair enough. Um, I, I wasn't really sure if Gyarados would have Earthquake. Sometimes it does for Electric types, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't. So we're going to go to Scovelin here. Uh, Scovelin should be able to set the sun up, and I should be able to get some solar beams happening. I wasn't thinking, like, Gyarados would stay into this matchup either. So I was correct there. Gyarados is going to be... Uh, Getting out of that matchup, and in comes Garchomp. So I've set the sunny day up, so I could go for growth here. I was like, yeah, I believe I can probably live one attack very badly. Let's see what happens here. Unless it's like Stone Edge or something. So here comes uh, the big boost there from growth, and Gyarados, not Garchomp. Gyarados, Garchomp combination is going to use Rock Slide. Holy smokes. So now it's going to go for protection here. It's good to use protection. I'm going to go for Solar Beam this turn and try and take the Garchomp. Garchomp Dose. Oh, wait, that doesn't sound right. Garrett, Garrett Chomp. Garrett Chomp. Man, Game Freak, if you're listening, you need to make a Pokemon called Garrett Chomp. Like, you would be a shark, but instead of like gut, like instead of it walking, it would have a serpent tail. So it would be a uh, like a Sharpedo's head, but have like a Gyarados's tail. That would probably just be like a, a longer version of Sharpedo. But anyway, I think it'd be pretty cool. So in comes Gold Dango there, and I'm going to win $69 for taking it out. The next Pokemon is going to be Talonflame. So Talonflame has got, uh, you know, its little built in there. So it's going to be able to outspeed me with Brave Bird. And, you know, that's the end of Scovelin. But a quality performance there uh, for Scovelin. Really uh, taking some really uh, impressive Pokemon out there. Next Pokemon is going to be Great Tusk. But this is prime opportunity, people. So I got that plus one at attack. And uh, the cool thing here, I actually got a, uh, a Quick Claw. So, like, great, I got Quick Claw Defense Girl. So, you know, if Talonflame does go for its predictable Brave Bird again, I'm going to be able to live that one a lot better than, you know, what I would have before. So, as you can see, this Brave Bird, right, this just did under half health. So, this actually forced a little Timmy Terra here to go into the Talonflame uh, Flying Terror. So, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to faint this turn unless I get a Quick Claw. If I don't, well, at least I've used made the opponent use up their terror just by you know, using a trolling move there. So Teleflame's going to go for its little Brave Bird there. Basically, they're just going to click the A button with their forehead, and that is the end of my great task there. But that was still all right. I could have you know, I could have gone for a rock. I could have gone for the rollout there, but I wanted to get that defense skill. Matter of fact, I thought they may even swap. 
So our uh, next Pokemon is going to be Low Kicks. I've got Terra Dark on this, as I mentioned before. Now this is um this is actually pretty decent because it's a stab uh, move here, and with the Terra, you actually this lends a lot of priority st uh, stab move, which is cool. So it gets like first impression, and it gets Sucker Punch too, which is kind of nice. So you can go for first impression and then Sucker Punch. You got a double priority. So go for that Sucker Punch on the Talaflame. That is gone. So that was a uh, that was actually a very threatening Pokemon to my team. So I'm, you know, I'm extremely glad that I got rid of that. So that's three Pokemon down here, but uh, I'm not out of the woods yet. Next Pokemon is going to be uh, Rotom Moa, you know. Uh, so we're going to go for Leech Life, almost take it out. Now, the reason I went for Leech Life, I thought they may go for something like Switcheroo or a status move, something like that. So I was a little bit worried. So that was good, you know. So now it's going to go for the Leech Storm here. Leech Storm does a lot of damage, but thanks to the Assault Vest that is attached to Low Kicks, I actually managed to live that, which is really cool. Rotom is going to be going down to another Leech Life here. So I'm like, okay, well, we've got Gyarados left, and there's only one other Pokemon besides Gyarados, which I know that, you know, there's a very good chance that I can take that out because I can outspeed it. And that is Mouse Hole. So I went to go for the Sucker Punch there, and they press the Cancel button. And that's it, people. Uh, that's the end of the fourth battle. Hope you enjoyed all four of these, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.